Hi there. In this video, we want to uh, talk about the knowledge distillation. Uh, we want to just talk through some of the basic application of the knowledge distillation. This paper is a good survey, and uh, the reason that I picked that one is because this is one of the recent survey uh, published in archive, and also it has very good figures. Uh, the knowledge distillation is when we have a model uh, and we trained it uh, very well on a data, but the model is big and the model has lots of parameters, like more than a billion parameters. And we want to use it in production or we want to have another model which has same accuracy, but smaller. We can use the knowledge transfer, which is called knowledge distillation. So in knowledge distillation, we want to train this student model from the teacher model. And um, we want to use some of the information that teacher model trained and learned during the training process. The paper has categorized the knowledge distillation in different forms, uh, but we don't want to go through each one. Uh, there are different types of categorization, like we have offline distillation, online distillation, which means that um, in offline distillation, the teacher model, the big model is trained and we use it as a pre-trained model for training a, a student model. But in online distillation, we are training the big model, the teacher model. And in the next epoch, we train the student model. So the teacher model is not trained yet. So uh, there are different types of uh, categorization and different types of algorithm for uh, using the knowledge distillation, but we want to use a uh, simplest way of knowledge distillation. So what we want to do is, uh, this is a generic response-based knowledge distillation that we uh, fit the data to the student, suppose the teacher is trained, and uh, we get the outputs, logit's output of the teacher, and we get the logit output of the students, and we have a distillation loss. And distillation loss can be a KL divergence between the these two logits, so that, that can be very simple. And uh, we can have, um, two types of logits, like we can create, let me show you, we can say that we have a loss of students, which means that we uh, train the student using the training data, and this is loss of a student. And we can have another loss, like using the distillation loss, which can be defined here, that is maybe the KL divergence between the teacher and the student's outputs. And um, we can have a weight, like we can say, this can be a total loss. So the, the student can be trained using this loss, not just by training this LS, the uh, loss of a student. The effect of adding a distillation loss um, evaluated in many papers, and the first paper is uh, 2015 by Hinton. They showed that using, using this can improve the performance and there are even some examples that the accuracy of the student model improved and outperformed the teacher model. Maybe one of the hypotheses behind the scene is maybe the lottery ticket hypothesis, which means that when we have a bigger model, maybe there are uh, more chance uh, for assigning random weights that when we want to train the model, maybe there are more potential to find a better solution for a problem. But when we have a smaller model, the number of uh, weights and random variable are less. That's why maybe we are not initializing those random variable very well. So uh, increasing the size of a model, increase the potential of different random variable, generating different random variable that are more close to the solution. So the uh, lottery ticket hypothesis say that if you have a very big model, like this is a big, very big model. And uh, after we turn it on a task, you will find out that if we remove some of the neurons, maybe we get this pass, we can get and remove all of the other weights uh, pruning them. So we can get similar performance. So it means that most of the uh, performance are because of these weights in the model. So the lottery ticket hypothesis is uh, saying that increasing the size of the model will increase the chance of finding these weights. And knowledge distillation is like a way that we can copy these learned weights to, an, to another smaller model. So it is like a pruning, but we train a different model for that. We want to use a 
cross examples and we implement this one. Uh, it is already implemented. We just want to write it in the Jupyter notebook and show how it is performing. So let's jump to Visual Studio Code and a Jupyter notebook. The first thing that we need to do is uh, importing the TensorFlow library. This time I want to use a cross and TensorFlow because I'm using a cross example. So the first thing is defining a teacher and a student model. So we have a teacher model and we have, an, we have a student model and we create another copy of the student just to, just to show you when we train the student using only the last function of the student, what happened? And when we add a distillation, what happened to it? And if you see that the architecture is same, but number of the convolution layer is reduced substantially. So this model is much smaller than the teacher model. So we wanna load the data using the means data set and we provide the training and test data annotations. And now it's time to train the teacher model. So we're just using the Adam optimizer and using the sparse categorical cross entropy. We turn it from logits and uh, we wanna show the sparse categorical, categorical accuracy and we train it for five epochs. So let's run this up to that point. So the model is training. I will pause the video until the training is finished. So the training is going to be finished. And uh, after it's finished, maybe it's time to train the, the same code just for training the a student scratch. So we just get the copy, the clone model from the student just to uh, for later comparison. Then we will try to implement distillation. So while this is training, I thought that maybe we can start writing that distillation part. So we can have a class. We can have a class called distillation and uh, we need to import it from cross.model and we need to define the init function. And uh, we get a student and teacher model to the init functions. And in a sort of distillation, maybe we can call distiller like the example in the cross. Because it is coming from the model, we need to define a compile function. We get the self, we get the optimizer, and we get metrics, we get a student loss function, and we get distillation, distillation loss function. And uh, I, I showed you an alpha, that is a way that how much distillation loss, how much student loss should be assigned. There is another thing called temperature because we use a label as smoothing. Um, the hint on, in the main original paper showed that if we do a label as smoothing, uh, the a student can learn better. So uh, the label as smoothing is just having a temperature and the temperature is, uh, we have logic divided by temperature. And if temperature is high, the student can learn effectively. So uh, we set temperature equal to three. So it seems that the, uh, the teacher model train now, let's train the student model for compile. First, we need to run the super for compile here. So we can say compile. So we can say optimizer is equal to optimizer and metrics is equal to metrics. For other variable, we just set them to the self now it's time to uh, write a train step. So we can say train step. And for train step, we need a self and data. And data is X and Y. Teacher apply the data and get the output. We can say teacher predictions, okay? Here, we, we can say that training is false because we don't wanna train it. We just wanna get output. You remember that diagram that we get the output of the teacher. Now it's time to using the uh, tape of gradient in cross. So we can say TF gradient tape as tape. And similarly, we get the student output. So we say student, but training is true. And this is a student out prediction. So we have a student loss function. So we can say self dot a student loss function calculate the loss between the student prediction and the real output, which is Y. So this is the loss. Maybe we can say a student loss. We had a distillation loss, so we can say self 
distillation loss. Distillation loss should get two input. First is the output of the students, but we should do label smoothing using the temperature. So we can say tf dot nn dot softmax. First, we get the teacher prediction and divided by self dot temperature. Second parameter, we do the same, but this time we apply the student prediction. The reason that we uh, define it as a function, because if you want to change the loss, if you want to change the how we want to calculate the loss between the teacher and a student, maybe we can change it from outside. So finally, the loss can be defined as the self alpha, as I said, it should be multiplied by a student loss plus one minus alpha multiplied by distillation loss. So this would be the total loss. So we can get the parameters of the student. So a student dot trainable variables. These are model parameters. With the type of gradient that we have, gradient, we have the loss and we have the model parameters. And we say this is gradient. We calculate the gradients on that. And now it's time to update the model. So using the optimizer, so optimizer, and here we zip the gradients and the model parameters, just for showing the metrics during the training. And for having a different metrics, like the student loss and distillation loss, we can show each, each of them how much they are changing. We can define another function uh, for this is terrainist that we can have a test stop. But here we can say self.student apply x and get predictions and get the self.student loss function and apply the loss function on predictions. And like before, we can use the compile metrics, update the stats, and all of all of that. So we can have all of this part here. So we have distiller, so I can run the distiller. And for using the distiller, we can define a distiller class and say a student is what and teacher is what and create a distiller. And similarly to what we are using here for compile, we can use the same. Also, we need to pass more parameters, like we need to pass KL divergence for distillation loss, but others are same and alpha is set to 0.1. And finally, you want to train the model. So if I run this, I will pause the video until this is finished. We should see how is the accuracy when, when we compare the students, then we compare the teacher, and when we compare the student learned from teacher and data. So now it is trained. So you can see that we can get about 97, 97 accuracy on test set. But in this case, we are getting about 97, 93 by training three steps. Um, and in teacher models, we are getting 97, 54. You can see that the student outperformed the teacher in this case. It is not significant, but it is a way of learning. And that means that the smaller model could train using the bigger model. So uh, in the uh, main web page of the CRAS, I will share it in the bottom of the YouTube video, it said that if the teacher is trained for five full epochs and the student is dis distilled on this teacher for three full epochs, you should, in this example, experience a performance boost compared to the training, the same student model from scratch and even compared to the teacher itself, as we saw. Uh, and you should expect the teacher to have accuracy of 97.6, the student trained from a scratch about 97.6, and the distilled student 98.1. It is not exactly the same what we get, but yeah, it seems that the knowledge distillation helped the student to learn some of the knowledge from the teacher. So we could boost the performance. Yeah, that's it. And thank you. Have a good day.